right, everybody. How are we doing today? Oh, boy. Let me turn the volume up on our headphones, yeah, right? It's a little, a little low? More, a little more juice little up more in there? A little more juice. Okay, how's this? A little it's better? good. Okay, there we go. Yeah. How's everyone doing today? Thank you for joining us tonight. Welcome. Welcome back to Jump Street Live. I think we're at the point right now where we don't, like in the first 10 or 15 episodes, we're like, welcome to episode. Now we're at the point where we're like past. Whatever. The numbers are so high, we don't even we don't know what even they are anymore. We don't the episode anymore. But welcome. Thanks I think it's 23, us. but who cares anymore? Yeah, I mean, who's keeping <laughs> count 23? <laughs> Well, thanks again, who, who's ever here to join us. Invite your friends, come through, sit down. There's room at the table, as we always say. And yeah. follow shout us. Out to, let's see, who we got in the, in the house right now? Who's in the house? Carlos Diamante, shout out. Uh, Kassar, Guam Tech, Kevin LeBron, what up, Kevin? Rob Silcox, so Jimmy Shooter's in oh, the house, up? too. Oh. So we got a bunch of people up in here right now. Cool. May yes. not look like it, but there's 36 people. Sick. <laughs> tell everybody to join us if you are. <laughs> if you're out there, tell everybody we're live right now. And if you're not here, the hell are you doing? Yeah, cozy up. You know what? If you if you ate dinner, you know you're relaxed right now, you know, grab a beer from the fridge, sit down, pop that thing. Hopefully it's cold and enjoy the episode for today. No beer today. No, nah, no beer today. <laughs> I'm taking a little break. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we always start the show by saying, please, you know, if you haven't already, follow us on all the platforms that we have. Facebook. What are the platforms? Instagram iTunes. Okay. If you do listen to us on iTunes, please give us a five star rev- rating and a review. YouTube, subscribe and click the thing for notifications. So when we do have these live episodes, it just hits you on your phone. And no matter where you are, if you're in like, you know, Walgreens or if you're in Rite Aid or whatever like that, it's like, boom, Dang. stop everything I'm doing, put down <laughs> the Colgate toothpaste and just watch the episode. Because we come first. And you can come back to, <laughs> to grocery shopping when you're done. And yeah, so, um, Follow us on those platforms if you haven't already. We want to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters too. Um, new supporters are Jan DeBoblier, James A. Ridley, Conjure Brand, Brett Lamare, and Jeremy Banbury. So thank you guys so much. In addition to our other, I think we have like 54 patrons. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so a lot of people out there. Yeah, shout and out to all of our patrons. Like- yeah, thank you so much for all the help. Um, goes a long way. May not seem like it. Dollar, yeah. two dollar, whatever it is, goes a long way. Helps us do things like the Winter Clash yeah, event that it, we it, just did. That's exactly what I was just about to mention. Like, helps yeah. us do things like get out to Winter Clash and like, um, you know, uh, basically be able to have access to guys who we never see or like yeah. hardly ever see, and like you yeah. know, gets us over there. And yeah, so it was good. We pumped out how many? I mean, how many episodes did we do that? Uh, yeah, we we just finished. We just six? put out the last Winter Clash episode. I think it was five, maybe six. Hmm. I could be wrong. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's not bad. It's a lot. We, we were busy. The first two we days were we were busy. <laughs> yeah. We'll get into that in a yeah, little we'll bit. Yeah, we'll get into that in a second. But yeah. um, we have, like we mentioned before, our Patreon monthly raffle, pretty much. So mm-hmm. for all our Patreon supporters to show our support, um, every month we do a raffle, just a random raffle. We'll pick one winner, and that person gets to pick one of any item they want from our online store. So we are going to do it right now, and I'm going to do it live on the Instagram, too. So people know that I'm not bullshitting right now. Oh, damn. So you got you got it pulled up over there? Really, yeah, so I have it over here. So I'm going to do this again, as we did last time. So I have all the names here. We're about to pick the Patreon winner for this month. Let me hit the little ding. Here we go. Boom. It's shuffling. Shuffling. Alex Hogan. Oh, no way. <laughs> Hoagie. Congratulations, Hoagie. Oh, wow. All the names here. We're about to pick the... All right, so... Okay, cool. Post- Congratulations, that. Alex Hogan. I know you're up there in Boston, getting ready for baseball season. Red Sox coming up. <laughs> the Sox, mate. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not mate. I'm, I'm uh, doing you other things. You spent too much time overseas, man. <laughs> I'm fucking up. The right goddamn now. Sox. <laughs> Come on, dude. The Sox. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you can do the Boston accent. So yeah, uh, shout out to Alex Hogan. Uh, so thanks, thanks, yeah. thanks, Alex, for the support. I think he's been like a, a patron since the beginning. I so think so too. He deserves this. And we also have the winner for the Celtic. Uh, yes, uh, we announced we it. We announced it um, the other day on on Instagram. But we just want to, you know, let everyone know that the Celtic uh, giveaway that we had, mm-hmm. we announced it on the Mary Muno episode mm-hmm. uh, from Winter Clash. Uh, they were giving away a pair of K skates, a whole entire pair of skates. Mm-hmm. Um, and the winner was Wilma Gibbs for her son Mikey. And I have a little clip that they sent in. Oh, nice. Uh, a whole pair of skates an a, whole pa- pair. a whole pair of skates Both of them too <laughs> The left and the right So yeah there's, there's Mikey killing it right now So he gets a fresh pair of skates I actually just got it today I just Sick. saw on, uh, on Instagram That they just got him today So Congrats, congrats Mikey. Mikey And Wilma For sending us the clips And thanks to everyone else Who entered the contest There was a lot of clips out there Maybe we'll put like Share a few of them out 
so people could take a look at them. Hopefully, we'll see him on a, a WTF for the week sometime soon. Maybe. That'd be cool. Maybe. With the case gates? That would be cool. Oh. He's pretty good. I saw him shredding. That's sick. Um, also, uh, Ricardo Lino made a little edit with him. I guess he knows him. He's from South Africa, I think. Okay. So I made a little edit with him the day after we announced that he got the skates. Sick. And he said he's going to put one out when he does get the skates. So we'll see something. That's awesome. So shout out to Caltic Skates and shout out to Mikey Gibbs. And speaking of the WTF of the week. Speaking of. We have a WTF of the week. We do. We do. Um, this week we have Bobby Spazoff. This clip was going around, so I'm sure you've seen it by now. But just in case you didn't. Did you see this or no? Mm -mm. I, 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 I didn't even see it right there. Oh. Yeah, you, that's, the, that's the whole point. Or you don't see it. So it's like a fakey three. I, I don't know. I was trying to figure out if it was a fakey three or a fakey seven. No, it's a fakey seven, but it's like a fake. Yeah. Wait, wait. It's a ha hang on. <laughs> I'll, play, I'll run that back one more time because that doesn't really make sense. Okay, we got to bring that back. So oh, I think it's it, fakey seven. Yeah, it is a seven. It's and like a fakey three stalled and then he pulls it around. Yeah, so it is. I couldn't figure out if it was a seven or a three. But now if you look at his shoulders... To seven. Yeah. It's hard enough to do a fakey seven. Yeah. Let alone Stole all the shenanigans like in the middle. Dang. Jeez. Shout out to Bobby. I met him at Winter Clash. Yeah, me too, finally. Cool guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh he's talking about trying to make it out to New York, so hopefully he makes it out here and we get to, you know, get him on the show. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. I want to hear him talk about the the whole um israel scene now because they have a lot of skaters out there now i see them always posting clips they have vod's coming out it seems like they're what, killing it it seems like the basically like the third wave of uh israel because i remember like israel israel had a scene like hoax three and then like yeah you know avi had his, his scene yeah, yeah. like it and it seems like there's like the, the new ones yeah the new, third generation yeah it seems like yeah it might have been a fourth i could be ignorant to the to the first first guys but it seems like the third generation there probably was we just don't know being uh, in america yeah of course but still, <laughs> of course <laughs> of course we're ignorant but but from, but from what i know it seems like this is like the third wave of, of six skaters out of Israel. So shout out to those guys. But oh, we got some cool news about yeah. Woodward East. Yes, Woodward. I just which, I just found this out which is exciting. the other day. Yeah, because yeah, you just came back from Woodward. Yeah, we were, I was at Woodward this past weekend. First of all, how was that? Uh, it was cool. It was super chill. Yeah? Super chill. It was like just a baby version of the event that we did last September. What year is it? Um, there was like okay. 30 kids. It was more than I thought. It was like 30 kids mm -hmm. or something like that. But um, yeah, Cam broke some crazy news to me that because we had... Miguel on here before and he was talking about how Woodward West does inline again mm -hmm. but they don't really advertise it they usually like one week a year yeah um so Woodward East finally for the first time I, f I should have asked how many years it's been but inline hasn't been at Woodward East in a few years so they're bringing it back this year week 12 for inline ages seven and up wow and this includes adults too if anybody wants to go to Woodward for for a week during damn week 12. even adults can go yeah see that's important so seven up they just I think they just have to have their own room though they can't stay in the cabins obviously with the kids yeah yeah but that's super sick, though. We're getting back in there. Yeah, that's awesome. And that wasn't too long. I thought it'd that's be longer. That's a huge opportunity. Yeah, it is. So anybody, everybody spread the word. If you want to go to Woodward, yeah. you know somebody who wants to go to Woodward, you want to send your kids there, mm -hmm. get them out of the house, you know, you don't have to deal with them for a week. Little, little week. <laughs> and they're in heaven, by the way. Yeah, like, straight yeah. up, straight up, too. I've honestly, like, I, I've never been a camper there, but I've gone there, like, as a visiting pro, like, yeah. in West back in the day. Mm -hmm. And man, it seems, if you're, like, a kid going there, that's, like, a dream come yeah. true. Yeah. You just, like, get all this, like, well, you get, like, what, there's like a pool. There's like skating all day. There's the, like trampolines. Yeah, it's not just skating. It's, it's like, like all it's types so of shit. So much. And they have like activities. All these other things. Movies, bowling. Yeah, yeah. There's like tons of food and you Did know. You, have you ever been there the first day that the campers get there? I know, but I could imagine. Yeah, I, I would think once I was there. I think they get in on Sunday, so mm -hmm. I was there on like a Sunday one time, and they're not allowed to skate. They just like walk around, mm -hmm. so you pretty much have the whole parks to yourselves. Mm -hmm. But all the kids are walking around. You see, they're all like, "Wow, whoa!" Like, like such like Oof. it's like a tourist in like a new city kind of thing. It does and sound like, like a rough day though. For the first, you can't skate you can't, the first yeah, day. I don't think Oof. you can skate. Yeah, That's but you just walk like around. It's like orientation day, I guess. Okay. And they familiarize. Yeah, and I guess they categorize you and your skill level. Well, totally. If they still do that, I don't know if they still do and that. And look, they they, they got to make sure it's like safe and everyone knows the rules and things like that because. Oh, Cameron's watching. He said two years it's been. Two so it's years. not that long. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Still, I, I thought it'd be longer until we come back. Yeah. So inline's there. Everybody, I, I guess go on the website. It's not available yet, I think, to book, but it will be soon. Okay. So I guess we'll keep you posted with that. Yeah. And of course, you know, follow Woodward on Instagram. I'm not sure if there's a separate from East and West, but... Maybe. I know there's maybe. a Woodward inline. Maybe there's, right, we'll that's that. updated. We'll that but up. along the Woodward lines, like I just mentioned before, what year is it? Last year, mm -hmm. in September, we had... Um, 280 inliners out there, which was insane. Uh, thanks to Cameron and Long. Um, yeah, I can't believe that. Yeah, they just had a meeting today about the details for this year's, what year is it, 2019. So 
Here you go. <laughs> You're getting it right here first hand from Jump Street. Thanks to Cameron Card and all the other guys long and all them. Um, it's September 20th through the 22nd. So block that week off in your mm. in your calendar. Registration opens April 1st. So that's next week. Wow. Next m- Monday. Yeah. So what's the capacity? Because like, I'm sure it's going to book out pretty quick. I don't know if there is a capacity. I remember like just... I know Woodward holds like, I think they say like 800 people or something like that. But oh, wow. I think it was 280 last year. So I think that we could get like four to five this year. I mean, anyone who's thinking about going, I suggest, I highly recommend it. It was really fun last it time. It was insane. Yeah. And, and it was only like pretty much mostly only Northeast people or yeah. East Coast people. So this is probably open up. Everyone saw how sick it was last year. We had a lot going on. There's going to be more going on this year. Yeah. So I'm sure a lot of people are going to come out from all over the country. Maybe like Europe, they're talking about flying some other people in. Oh, wow. So, I mean, everything's still in the works. But um, if you want to book... And you know Butter TV is going to be there making that badass edit. <laughs> Shout Butter out TV. Butter TV. JP. Every time there's a there's a sick event, like JP's putting out it's a badass there. edit behind yeah, it. Yeah, I was talking about some stuff Love before. That. He's so funny. Love that. Um, but if you want to book a cabin, go to WY ii.com what year is it.com you'll be able to book cabins there starting at there's an early bird rate of 105 dollars, and that's good until the end of june then it goes up to 115 from july 1st to august and then there's late registration which is 125 per bed um that's the month of september september 1st to december 15th mm-hmm. so um registration closes september 15th so get it in now while you can save some money wii.com w Y I I. What year is it? W Y I I. Yeah, we'll link everything in the the edit afterwards. Okay. If you want to book, they have like the lodge, like hotel rooms out there. Mm-hmm. If you want to book those, you have to call Woodward itself and book those separately. Okay. So, I'll leave the number and everything will be in the description below. Because those but, are the special joints. Yeah, those are like the rooms that you have your own showers. Yeah. Like it's not a bunch of people you know running around. Sometimes that's your thing. Sometimes it's not. Doesn't so Justin I, Brasco usually rent out like the whole <laughs> thing for that? I, I picture Justin just like <laughs> he does like the glamping, like the glamorous <laughs> camping. He'll have like the tent with like the bougie couch and yeah, like yeah. A, a water bed and like a lava lamp yeah. and big screen TV. Also this year they're gonna have which they didn't have last year because they didn't expect it to be such a big turnout. Um, there's going to be food available on campus the whole weekend pretty much. Oh, so there's going to be barbecue Friday and Saturday night. Uh, the canteen will be open from 9 to 5 on Saturday. So you pretty much don't have to leave Woodward now this time. Before wow. you had to like leave to get food and come back. And now it's going to be a lot more inclusive. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a lot easier for everyone to, to feed themselves. And it's just going to be more organized this year than wow. it was last year. And shout th- out to uh, Long and Cam for, yeah, doing for this. organizing wow. this because I know it's a lot of work, especially working with Woodward to see what they could do to make this happen. Also, yeah, and it's a great thing. And now we're just showing them. Maybe last year was the reason why Inline is back in this year in the camp. Maybe could be a big reason for yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. So we keep bringing yeah. those numbers up. They'll put us back in. You know, on the website. You know, That'd be sick. We'll have a, a picture of a blader on the website again. <laughs> Got to do, do the the grassroots footwork. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out long shout out Cam. shout out long shout out cam so yeah uh that's september 20th to the 22nd i have it blocked in my calendar you should too i was gonna I, I saw some news on there i didn't know if you wanted me to to mention it or you but also we could touch on winter clash because we haven't talked about that yeah, yeah yeah let's do that real quick because we just finished our string of winter clash episodes too. yeah so i hope you all enjoy them if you haven't seen Seems like the Lomax episode was a big hit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, but they were all great, and like you know, I, I think I think everyone appreciated. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, we got a lot of compliments on on a lot of those. I think Mary's yeah. was really good. It was the first lady finally. Yeah, I think uh, Leon was. He's such an articulate speaker. I know. And we gotta have him on for like three hours one day. Yeah, and, and all of our guests. I don't want to just sing. Yeah, yeah, I know. but Leon could yeah. just talk and talk. Yeah, and talk. I mean, he's just like so. Every time I hang out with him, I learn like two or three new words. You know <laughs> Always, I mean? or at least like new phrases or yeah. something. He he was talk. He literally said just gesticulate. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I never knew that was a word like, either. When you just stick, yeah. I was like, oh my god, that's another new new word for the word bank. Right He's like there. the, the walking library or walking <laughs> dictionary. I mean, yeah. So yeah, it was, it did was you al- see the new edit? He put he put out a new edit too. I don't know if it was him or his crew. Bank. Um, it was called shit. It wasn't called shit. <laughs> no. Um. Ah, uh, homage to the dream. That's what it was called. It was like mm-hmm. him and the boys, him, uh, Wellen, Sam Croft, and a couple other people when they went to the Blading Cup. They made like an LA. VOD and they just put it out. I saw it oh, today. Dang. It was pretty sick. Really it was nice. Yeah. So check that out. Also, yeah. If you check that out. Yeah. Where, where, like uh, I don't know. I just looked up Leon's Insta- uh, Facebook page and saw it there. Maybe on his on his Instagram, go to Cheers God and link in the yeah. bio. Hopefully, that's what I'm. Gonna do. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, it's linked in the bio. That's what I'm gonna. I do. think it's donation too, so you can pay what you want. Oh really? Yeah. 
So it's not like a traditional VOD. It's kind of no, just like I, a, you, you could do like a dollar, five dollars, a pound. Yeah. So one pound, five yeah. pounds, 20 pounds, whatever you want. So you, you got to pay for that. You I, gotta, yeah, I think that's how it should be too, though. Because yeah. sometimes if you price it too high, I feel like people don't do it. Mm-hmm. I remember I've heard from people who've done the donation too that you make you sometimes make more money on the donations rather than like actually charging yeah. like 20. Because if you charge like 20 or 10, people are like, eh, I don't know about that. Right. But if you like, you could donate like just five, yeah. three or something like that and more people are encouraged to to donate and watch it, you know? Exactly. exactly. And like, for example, it, d- it depends like on the person. Like if like Dustin Adam, I oh, made yeah. like a donation based VOD. I'd like leave like two fifty in there or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, oh, shout out Duncan, by the way, he watches every, every episode. He's like so sick. You guys competed at winter clash. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Back to the winter clash thing. Well, yeah, we didn't expect that. That was, did crazy. you know you were going to compete until you got there? Oh, I hell no. <laughs> when, when, oh, when, hell when, no. When I was going, I was like, I'm just going to skate with the boys and yeah, and that's like what that. I was picturing too. Yeah. And then, and then when I went there, uh, I saw Dominic Wagner caught up with him. Obviously, we had him yeah. on the show. And, like, you know, we're we're friends for, I don't know, a few years now. Maybe coming up on 10, but just, like, on and off from seeing each other on tour and things right. like that. But um, I was like, yeah, man, you're going to compete? And he was, and we're, like, the same age. Mm-hmm. And he was like, he was like, of course, man. Like, when everyone's skating, why not just join the party? And yeah. I, was like, <laughs> I was like, you know what, man? Like, that's a good attitude. Like, yeah. you know, join the party. And yeah. I was like, maybe I should just do that. Because it's, like, not approach competitions how i did when i was like 25 yeah i was gonna say you're not 20 you're like, anymore where exactly you're just trying like, to win you're just trying to have fun exactly when you're like 20 you're just like oh that's yeah we gotta we gotta do think of all this and good well not even 20 it's like whatever age you are yeah. but when you're like immersed in it but it's different now yeah but basically i'm just not as like i skate all the time like i skate as much as i can but i'm definitely not like at this point in the game too mm-hmm. much concerned about how i do in competition so yeah. i was like oh that's a great attitude just like yeah. kind of approach competition because my old way was just always like kind of to be competitive c- mm. competitive and now i was like oh well now i'll just go and um hang out with my friends yeah you know so it's just a session with the boys yeah it was a good attitude but you know that was before i saw dominic skate his run and i was like <laughs> God, he's so f- well he's a beast anyway. he's so good no wonder why i say yeah that. he's a beast he like was in the finals crushing it like if he, yeah. he got really hurt at the end but if he yeah. didn't he yeah. would have been in he contention been in for top yeah. three oh, for easily. sure yeah. he was killing it so yeah um I, I, you you had a really good a good run i didn't land one trick in my run you land one i didn't land one trick that's usually my no, I, that's usually I, my routine. It was like four. <laughs> it's crazy. In like four or five minutes, you only get like three or four tries on a trick. Yeah, yeah. So I tried. I tried one trick I had twice. Four tries, at, and I tried another trick twice. Yeah, and I missed them all each time. <laughs> and I was like, "All right, that was that, that was, was fucking it. sweet." That's not like you though. You usually do pretty good in contests. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, like <laughs> it's the, been a while since the, you competed. The, I the guess, approach, the approach yeah. was just like. Not uh, Eye of the Tiger. I didn't have Eye of the Tiger playing in my head when I was going. <laughs> I more had like, uh, you know, Raspberry Beret. Chill by Jazz. Like Prince. Going. Yeah, <laughs> maybe some chill jazz. Probably like some Little Miles or right, something. Right, right. <laughs> Duke Ellington. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Sometimes that helps you win, though. You never know. Yeah, but you. Um, what I you... didn't go. I, I landed like one, maybe two tricks. But the same thing. It's like four tries you get in like yeah, a five minute heat or space, so. like, yeah. yeah, I remember I did one thing and I didn't do it. I'm like, okay, next one. Mm-hmm. And I move over to something else, which I thought was cool. But it was in the back of the park that no one saw. And I, I didn't see anything in like any edits or anything. So definitely no yeah. one saw it. But I was just happy to do something different that no one else was doing. Yeah. I did that. Then went back to the first thing. And before you knew it, time was up. And it was, I had no quick. breath yet. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I feel like it was maybe even le- like I don't know like I don't know the exact time but I feel like it was like less than five minutes. I feel it was just like like one try. It two always try. does, yeah. Because you're I'm super like, rushed and the time just flies yeah, right by. It's crazy, but mm-hmm. a lot of people. It is what it is. Yeah. I, I wish I, I could have landed one. One but, trick, yeah. but I landed some tricks like not in the competition. Yeah, yeah. I think it's more fun anyway doing that stuff. Yeah. I had more fun at the in between sessions. Yeah, I, mean, I got to skate with Oigen finally. I never got to skate with him before. I was cool. That's it. I, did, I, I, I didn't up. skate directly with him, but I, I got like yeah, me him and size more skated like this. You know the down rail to flat on the bottom, like mm-hmm. it was like a floor rail that was like drilled into the ground. Yeah, yeah. We skated that together. Like me and size more were skating it. Oh, that's. And we we're just feeling it out, and Oigen comes like, "Oh, can I skate with you guys?" We're like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, let's skate." Yeah. And we skated in a course in like one or two tries. He's like thousand switch ups yeah. on it, and me and size more were like just watching, like, "Oh my god." Why did we say he could skate with <laughs> <Yeah>. us? <laughs> that was perfect, like, though. I mean, I got to finally meet him, and totally. I got to finally talk to him, and I got to skate with him too. Yeah, and it was cool. I think that's what these events are all about: totally. meeting all these different people. I've been watching him skate for you know years. Yeah, so I finally get to meet him and skate with him and shit. Yeah, and stuff like that is cool. I'm sure a lot of other people had similar experiences to that too. Oh yeah, yeah. I got to, got to meet a lot. Like I, I was surprised to see uh, yeah, Hayden Ball was out there, mm-hmm. and you know, I hadn't seen him in, since I think the Shredwiser tour. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, years ago and. Yeah, so it was sick. It was sick to see him out there and just like a bunch of people, 
who uh, who I met. Like, damn! Shout out to this one guy who I I don't remember his name. It's the most Irish name, but he was walking, <laughs> he was walking around the uh, the competition with an Irish flag on his back. Oh yeah, and he was I just him too. I don't remember yeah, his name either. He was a sick dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he was pretty drunk by. T- I didn't see him until the finals. Yeah, he was pretty drunk by then. But and yo, shout out to Dan O'Gorman. I've been wanting to meet that guy for a long Who's time. That? He's an Irish skater who skates for oh. USD. But like he's like yeah like really good like he's like him and like Al are like you so you've been following him for a while and yeah I've been seeing him cool, out there right? skating with Nick I see him skating with uh, you know Al and all the, yeah, all yeah. those edits and I'm like who's this new you know yeah. kid and it was, it was cool to meet him and it was cool to meet a lot of these uh, guys who I hadn't seen in a while like Kaleo it was good I haven't seen him mm-hmm. since 2010 mm-hmm. yeah so it was good to catch up with all these people yeah yeah it was, and it, it was like the event that everyone fucking went to yeah so, so many sick. people went this like apparently like I haven't been in years to mm-hmm. Winter Clash but. Apparently this was a. a well, big it was the biggest one. turnout, I think. Yeah. They had like fifty-one countries of competitors, and not including the spectators, spectators themselves. There was a uh, actually on the Winter Clash Facebook page. They just put up an, a cool edit. I don't know if you saw it either. It was like not your traditional contest edit. It was like mm-hmm. just little bits of the stuff that was happening through the week. So like, if anyone who hasn't seen it yet, I definitely encourage you to check it out. It was on their Winter Clash Facebook page. I don't know if it's on their uh, Instagram as well, but it. It wasn't just like showing the contest. It was all the side events, all the premieres, all the people like hanging out, like the there's just everything else that makes the Winter Clash what it is besides the contest was involved in this. And it was just super chill. I think that's more important than the actual contest itself is the whole vibe of the whole weekend. Totally. And that's stuff you don't really get to see in edits. If you never go there, you don't know that this shit's going on. It's definitely something you have to like, you know, experience. Yeah, for there's sure. so much shit going on every like literally everywhere. If you don't want to watch the contest, there's something else going on in the other room. It's like we, t- I think we touched, we touched on the, uh, Leon episode it was total overload. Yeah. Like ho- homie overload. <laughs> homie overload, but also sensory overload. Yeah. And, just everything. Uh, yeah. It was really, it was really cool. Yeah. Uh, um, Uto too. It was really good to, uh, was, you never met him before. No, I'd not met yeah. him before. Wow. So, so good. He's that good in person too. Yeah. And, and <laughs> seriously, I'm, I'm He's like, that good in person. I'm blown away by, by Joe, man. Like, you know, Joe is just like, mm-hmm. He's like got like a whole new kind of like confidence in his in his whole thing. So we were talking about like how like you said like he didn't land one trick and in the finals he didn't miss one Joe trick. didn't miss one trick. Yeah. yeah, he landed every single we're trick. We're polar opposites. Yeah, he was it's just yin and yang. <laughs> Me and Joe on the opposite ends of the, spe- it's of so the blade crazy. spectrum. Yeah, dude. watching him skate was just like, yeah. oh shit, that's crazy. He did that. Oh, he's just doing that. Okay, he's doing that. And he would just pick off like different spots. Well, and actually, he did everything. miss one trick in the finals. The Royale, the Royale the first, to yeah. the bank. But so that's, one thing that's about out of like maybe. 10 tricks total between his heat the yeah. finals and then that final trick thing but that's Which pretty he did, good he did, a, he did a bonus final trick too he didn't have to do that yeah he's back at like <laughs> a 900 that's pretty good yeah. yeah he's doing good yeah mm-hmm. so good i mean everyone's seen the clips by now how crazy this shit was yeah and it was fucking intense yeah it was real cool to see in person too because like that kind of energy is just like yeah you have to feel it it's yeah it's it's something it's special. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. It was cool to see. It made me like proud to be a part of uh, Blade. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I yeah. left that event like so hyped on skating. Yeah. Everything. I was like so motivated to just like do more of the podcast and like skate more often and meet more people. Mm-hmm. And then when I, that's why I went like when I, I had like a three week trip after that and I just was so excited to skate in all these other countries again afterwards and meet new people and it just like hyped me up so much. I felt like a kid again. It was so sick. Yeah. Like. W- that was like that was crazy watching like your trip after after Winter Clash. So yeah. like, what well, you you drove to um, Belgium with John Ortiz? Yeah, with John Ortiz, we hopped, me and my wife hopped in a car mm-hmm. with him to Brussels. It wasn't no skating. We just chilled out for a few days. Mm-hmm. Then we flew to Singapore, where uh, I met up with a few people out there, and we. I was like, even though it was like a vacation for us, I had my skates with me. So I was like, Amanda, let me just one day a week at each place. Let me just skate one day a week. She's like, okay. So I had my one day skating in Singapore, which was like a Sunday night skate at a local skate park. Six skate park and like 30 people showed up, something like that. I'm like, oh, that's sick. That's like way Dang. more than I thought was going to show yeah. up. And they're like, like that, you're impressed by that? Like that's, I'm like, if we get 30, if you get 10 people to skate in New York, that's like, yeah, like a fired session, let alone like 30 people. Unless you're talking like a speaking th- of, there's a Friday night skate. Friday night skate this coming week, up yes. this Friday. Do you know where it is? I just posted I about it, it on the Instagram. It meets at Union Square. Okay, yeah. It's Seven p.m. Seven p.m. So if I you're in New York, check it out. If not check. <laughs> if not, we have it on our check story. The stories. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but, yeah, they had like thirty kids out, and it was just super sick. Um, it's just always cool to skate with new people, mm-hmm. and also actually, um, I didn't even notice as I was skating the whole time. 
like I went to like the bathroom or something like that. The park was so big. There's like a whole other section I didn't see. And I come back up and I noticed there was like 10 other skaters, like just skating this curb, like straight beginners and like like 10 of them. And I just walked by like not like I noticed them. And I just walked by and then I heard someone scream like, yeah, like super hyped. And I look over and he like just landed something. He goes, I just did my first front side. Whoa. And I was like, whoa. And like instantly like hit me right here. Like I Dang. instantly thought of my first front side. The birth. Yeah. And I was the like, I-, I haven't seen that in, I don't know how many years, 20 something years. Man. Like, do you remember your first front side? <laughs> I don't think It's hard so. to even think of I remember that. my first, my first grind was like uh, a Mizu or Soul or something. Oh, I, I, I think I do remember my first front side. What was your first front side? Yeah. It was on like a bike rack. At, That's a by good like thing Tottenville to... High School. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like your hometown spot. <laughs> yeah, and like there's the, there was the top part of the bike rack. Yeah, and I just like jumped on. I just held the whole way. Yeah, like, you know. So I just. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good I, way to learn, actually. I yeah, I, 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 I didn't. I didn't really man up on the on the no <laughs> touch, and I just kept front side with my hands like hovering right over. Like, yeah, yeah. Nervous as a. Well, front siding yeah. a bike rack is probably one of the scariest things to front side when you're. It's so easy to wash out on a rail on a front side when you're not stable on blades yet. I don't know. I, 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 my first thing I skated was like a PVC P rail. Oh, that's also like the deadliest thing you can see. Those like the first, thing, like, and then I like afterwards, like you know, it was like ledges and all that stuff. Yeah, but, yeah. that's like probably one of the you started skating like the scariest obstacles. I didn't know that your first, yeah, like the shit you started skating on. It's funny because like I, I was, I went to Queens to like when I was just first started skating with my buddy Alex, and uh, the only thing I'd skated was PVC rail and a, <laughs> and a bike rack rail. That yeah. was it. And these kids, like who I met, like in the who are also like you know they all had lightnings and tarmacs, or whatever. Yeah. And they were like, "Yo, you want to go skate this spot?" And I was like, "Yeah, let's go, man. I love skating. I don't know, I, I love <laughs> skate really. Like, yeah. I was still trying to like get in there. And then there was like, some ledges that were like pretty high that I can't hit. Mm. And I was like, "Oh man, I don't know. I I can't hit these, but I can hit some rails. And they were like handrails, and I didn't know what handrails were. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that they called the rails that went down stairs, stairs handrails yeah, yet." Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, handrails for sure. I thought uh, they meant like a bike rack, and they just took me to some like handrail. And I was like, I, I can't, I can't do that. Yeah. That's too big. <laughs> so I don't know if that story. Well, bit, that's like that's like, a bit of an offshoot. That's a drastic <laughs> change from like a bike rack right. to an actual handrail. Yeah, I just like. That's I, true though. Like yeah. when, like if you think of like a regular civilian, like when you're walking in front of buildings or walking around the city, like you don't think of a handrail as like an obstacle. It's just like a thing that's there. Yeah, you know? you, I think you call it a banister if you're a regular. Probably, person. Yeah, yeah. If you're like, <laughs> you're like uh, a regular if person. you're a civilian, yeah, a non blader. Yeah. But now we're like just forced to have that vision for years yeah, that like something rail. could do. You could do something on this rail. Yeah. Even if you're 60, 70, 80, you can't walk anymore. We'd probably be like, oh, I used to want to be able to like, you know, topsoil this rail or whatever. Yeah. And it's a whole completely different way of looking at it. Yeah. And if you start skating, you don't even look that you think that way either. Probably. You're just like, oh, you could jump on this. OK, let me try to do that then. Yeah. I mean, crazy way to look at it's it. It's a crazy way to look at it. And, and I think I think it probably started somewhere in skateboard culture. But, uh, you know, probably. I don't know how far back those those documents go i don't know either. <laughs> i don't know yeah my first thought was someone was asking philip duarte asked what's your first fish brain <laughs> oh my first fish brain. do you remember that's like a, it was that's definitely a specific, like, specific trick it was that's pretty specific it yeah. was definitely like a i don't know i think i used when i first like started doing or trying to do fish brains it was um mm-hmm. Ledges way too high that I couldn't do it on, and I would just like fake rocket fish brain, like Luke Kang kick I think, it. I think that was like a thing back in the day like too. That. I used to do that also. Or just like really go as fast as I could on like a ledge that was like a half a foot long or a yeah. foot long, like yeah. those little ones at Tottenham, like a little you know, bonk, like you little know thing. those, like yeah, yeah, those edges. Yeah. So probably on that, like, those are kind of scary to do it on too. I think don't they have like a bottom bench next to it or something? No, but it was just like those on the one of little it? bits on the outside. Mm-hmm. Like oh, okay, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I just like a U. And you say, exactly, yeah, yeah. but the ones in the outside yeah, yeah. bit. So I'll just run by and just like, <laughs> kick it. Right? Like, They're like, all like your first everything is like almost that time of the high school. A, straight up, man. <laughs> straight up. Like, yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, everything. Like, <laughs> I, I was just going to say, like, I remember there was a point when I was like, I was like a freshman in high school and I was like, there's like a five stair there. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I want to do this on everything. This before scootering. So like I ollied it on a skateboard. Oh, and, did you? And, like, I, I jumped it on a bike. Oh, and then I, is that in the school? No, it's on the. It's between the two wall rides. Like it's. It's really small. Oh, that small. that little thing. It's nothing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> but yeah, I did, yeah. But I remember just like being like freshman in high school. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did jump this on all three things. Badass. It's nothing. <laughs> Anyone could do it. Yeah. Like, you don't even need to ollie on a skateboard. You just go really fast. You just roast it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like yeah. just don't move. Would you do it now? Uh, on what a skateboard? Yeah. I mean. 
don't know. What about on blades? Would you jump the five star on blades? I want to. I want, let's go <laughs> skate after this. Let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> go to Tomville? Yeah, sure. Geez, you gotta have the fence and everything. That's that's that place is really nostalgic for me. When that place yeah, goes, yeah. I'm gonna piece of me is gonna die. Damn. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah uh, anyway. Oh, speaking of, so after Singapore, I went to Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, and met up with uh, Dash from Dashi Skates, yeah. and he also showed us around everywhere and. My one day to skate there was they had like a local video, a team video premiere, which is really sick. A lot of people showed up too. It might have been also like 30 some people, mm-hmm. which I was like, oh, it's sick to see this many people out. Um, skated some park with actual ramps that I'm not used to skating. Was that like the one with the true top sole up in the clip? It was like, well, there's a lot of true top sole. No, the one up. <laughs> you know, the... It, was like, it was like a round one. It's like a wave one. Okay. The one up, no, the one, the big one up like the yeah. down ledge, that was, that was in Singapore. Okay. And that was funny because that day, like um, they were like, Yo, you got to do like one true topsail while you're here. We got to see it. I'm like, all right, whatever. I haven't really done even true topsails in a long time. But I skated the whole night, a couple hours. And then the park, the light shut off at like 10 o'clock or something mm-hmm. like that. And it was like 10.50. And I'm like, oh, shit, I got to like do a true topsail on something. Yeah. So like, I guess the, the first thing they pointed at was that obstacle. So like I waxed it up and I gave like one or two shots. And I'm like, oh, I have no energy left. I can't do this. And I'm like, let me get one more. And I like... It was literally when I was about to drop in, I asked the kid next to me what time it was, and he told me it was 10 o'clock already. So I'm like, oh, the lights are about to turn on mm-hmm. any second. He goes, yeah, they're about to get shut off right now. Mm-hmm. I'm like, fuck. So I did one more, and that was the one that I did. Mm-hmm. And that's like everyone bugged out. And then literally, you can't see it in the clip. It must have ended right there. But the lights shut off as soon as like I roll away. That's sick. So like I just made it in time. I was like, okay, I'm happy Hollywood to do that. moment, dude. Yeah, yeah. Lights, camera, action, <laughs> Yeah, it was cut. perfect. <laughs> and that never happens, too, especially with me. I'm like the least consistent skater. So for me to get a trick in like two yeah. or three tries that I haven't done in forever. It was like, it was fun to do. Yo, by the way, before you continue on about your story, uh, I didn't, dude, like as long as I've known you, I didn't know that like, I guess you're like this guy who's known for true top souls. <laughs> I, I, I've always known that like, I didn't really, I, I like ha- Nick, Nick Lomax is like, do a true top I know. That, the, the guys are asking, D- you can't leave until you do yeah, a true top Yeah, I know, so I, exactly. I, I didn't know it's this so, about you. I'm a one trick pony. But I wouldn't say that, but it, but I guess that's one of your like, you know, signature. Moves. Yeah. Like I knew like people like liked him, but I didn't know until this trip that people, yeah, I forgot about Lomax said the same thing too. Yeah. And then. In Singapore, and then when I went to Kuala Lumpur, they like, yo, you did one in Singapore, you have to do one here. So that's why I did another one, like the curve ledge. But um, I used to always discourage that too, <laughs> like being like a one trick pony type of thing. Yeah. But I remember this one time we were filming for The Truth, maybe two. We were skating mm-hmm. Shapes in Boston. You know, okay. Shapes. Oh, yeah. Um, and there's that one obstacle. Actually, I true top sold it too. I true top sold it. Yeah, like like blue ledge. It kind of goes out, out, right? Yeah. So good. But Franco was like, yo, I want to do some on this. And he was like, and I remember Hakeem was there, Hakeem Jamal, and he was like, he's like, yo, this would be perfect for you. I think he said he wanted to do like sweat stance, like five out or seven out or something like that. Oh, uh, he tried and, seven out of it. Yeah. I was there, yeah. And Franco didn't want to do that. And Hakeem, he's like, I could do it, but like, I always do that. And Hakeem's like, that's your shit though. Like people want to see you do that. Mm. And you're like, it's like, you don't go to McDonald's and not get the Big Mac, you know? It's like, that's what you're known well, for. We so shouldn't go to, yeah. we shouldn't go to McDonald's anyway. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, but yeah. Yeah. Like you shouldn't. Like, just embrace what you're good at, and that's what people right. like you for. And he was like, you know what? You're right. Fuck it. And he did the, the sweat stand 720 out, and yeah. it was, like, super sick. And I, th- I think that's a good perspective. It is a good yeah. perspective, because, mm-hmm. like, just if people like it, they always like you for a reason, and yeah. that's what it is, you know? If I suck at, like, unities, I'm not going to try to do shitty-ass unities my whole fucking life. Right. I, I think there was... It, it depends on the mentality, but I think the reason, why, like, a lot, of, a lot of us held that mentality is because we were, like, kind of skaters or at least in New York, I'm not sure, or, or from the generation or maybe the city, but like we used to constantly play skate all the time, always yeah, battling. Yeah. So like we were always kind of like through that medium, like expanding our like trick vocabulary. Yeah. So basically like, and we were all shit talkers. So if people like <laughs> yeah. have like a smaller shit vocabulary, yeah. a smaller trick vocabulary, we'd like bust their chops and things yeah. like that. But no, I think it's, I think you can do a bit of both. Like I think mm-hmm. you can like, you know, push yourself on this side, but also like the tricks that you know, like that you own. Yeah. Just like own the shit out of yeah. them. Like, you know, just like it's take definitely it have away. like both sides. You definitely want to be a well rounded skater. Yeah. But if exactly. you're good at something, like show it off. Don't I mean, neglect it. Everyone yeah. wants to see it. When people see John skate, they want to see John Julio do like souls and top souls and stuff yeah. like that. You know And stand tall fish brains. Yeah, like, like all, yeah. all this crazy shit. And like that's like what you want to see. Yeah. And Hakeem was right when he said that, like however many years ago. And he's like, just embrace it, like just do it. That's what you do best, do it. Mm-hmm. And that's like halfway through the trip, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna like embrace it, whatever. Yeah. You want to see me do a true topsoil, do a, a fucking true topsoil. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Um 
Someone had a question. It was random. I guess we're going to just take random questions throughout the night. I guess, I guess we'll take <laughs> random questions and we'll take this one. But I also want to hear the completion of your trip because um, this is such a long trip. Oh, yeah. Oh, I actually have something else, too. Ended up in Amsterdam, um, in, in Australia. In Australia. Because we were supposed to go home after Malaysia. Right. And then Scotty Crawford said he was doing that event. Yeah. And Scotty Crawford said he was holding that event. And it happened to be the week after we were going to be in Kuala Lumpur. So me and Amanda were like, fuck it, let's just go. We canceled our flight home. Long story short, we went to Australia. And we did the touristy thing there. I've been there before, but I never got to like be a tourist there. And we, uh, same thing. I was like, let me get that one day to skate. Yeah. You know, I might have skated twice. I don't remember. But yeah, let me get that one day to skate, mm-hmm. which was that event, which was fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. And there wasn't actually that many like edits or, or photos from that um, event. But mm-hmm. it was like supposed to get rained out. And it kind of did get rained out. It was at the Manly Bowl, that like outdoor bowl. So it was an outdoor spot. And it happened to like rain on and off. And then it finally rained to like where everything was soaked. And it was raining for like an hour or something like that. And Scotty was like, all right, we're, ch- we're switching it up to this indoor park, however far away it is. Um, it starts like 5 o'clock. So we'll just regroup there. And this was like maybe 2 o'clock or something. Mm-hmm. So everyone just hung out in the rain pretty much. And it was like, because we had nowhere to go. Right. So we just hung out in the rain, kind of like shot the shit. And the rain started dying down, like 3-ish, something like that, 3.30. So there's a mini ramp there that's like a wooden mini ramp. And they had squeegees and stuff there. So Tom Fry and Jason Rayner were like, let's just start mopping this up. You know, let's give it a shot, you know. And they did, and they started working on it. And I was like, oh, there's no way this is going to work. The first, like, squeegee I seen Tom Fry do, I was like, oh, shit, that works. And I instantly got a mop and started, like, just helping out. Before you knew it, there was, like, 10 people cleaning up this ramp. And I never seen... Like, you would think if a ramp's wet, you're never going to skate it. Like, it's just so dangerous. It's slippery. Mm-hmm. But literally in 10 minutes, that thing was spotless. And we just started skating. And Toby Heslope started skating, I think. I jumped in there. A few other people jumped in there. Bro, a hell of a crew, by the way. I yeah, saw, like, crazy. Like, what? Tom Fry, Deanna, Tom Fry, Anthony, Blake Dennis. Yeah, Blake Dennis. Scotty Crawford. John yeah. Julio was out yeah, there. Yeah, John Julio. Cesar che- Moore che- was there. You cheated on me. On the show. <laughs> we'll, talk, well, actually, we won't talk about that. Cause it'll be a surprise. Okay. Oh, is that a surprise? I guess so, maybe. Okay. Um, we but um, <laughs> we, won't, we won't talk about the betrayal. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, crazy turnout. It was like top five sessions of my life. Like, had it been just all these people that I've never met before that I got to skate wow. with. Um, I saw Blake, a picture of Blake Dennis doing a back fast, fast slide on the yeah, corner. He, I know it was that was like, like right when I got there. There he is. He that's Blake lighting. Dennis. Yeah. I saw him in 1999 at those weren't even his South skate. Street Seaport at New York Niss, and he was he. I think he won that. Yeah. And that's so it's 20 years ago. Jeez, yeah. crazy, yeah. crazy, and he's still doing he's back still, fast yeah, slides. Yeah, still skating that good. And looks those, the same. Those weren't even his skates; they were John skates. So he was doing that, and not even his own <sighs> skates. So good. Bark at the moon, man. But um, medium, smell the glove <laughs> for real. Yeah, and send it. Um, stand fast. This section was so good. Mm-hmm. Skate to Alice in Chains. Um, we. Like during that event, Scotty was like, it was sponsored by 5050 and some other companies. And Scotty was like, I'm going to start handing out gear to people doing sick lines. You have to do like a three piece line. Mm-hmm. And people were skating. And then he's like, you know what? Everyone's that, doing that's so good. That's a good rule. Yeah. I like it that. Like, rule. It had to be three tricks. I like that. Um, mm-hmm. And then afterwards, he's like, so many people are skating sick. I'm just going to start handing stuff out to people lacing yeah. tricks. Hard to so judge. he started handing people out. Yeah. It was like one of those things. Yeah. Um, so he started handing things out. And I saw him like walking over to me with gear. And I'm like, I hope he doesn't give me stuff. Not that I'm like not grateful for it, but like I don't want anything. Like I, I, if he gave me something, I would just give it to someone else. Yeah. And he walks over to me with like a bunch of like 50, 50 gear and like all this stuff. And then he pulls this out and he goes, this is from Tom Fry. And he gives me a brand new copy of Daily no. Bread issue number one. No. Mint condition. Look at that no. thing. So no, I was like, didn't. okay, I'll take that. <laughs> no, he did Yeah, not. I've never seen this. I'm scared to yeah. open this. No, it's it's good. I opened it. I didn't get to read it yet. I didn't go Gav Drum on it. But Dude, yeah, how sick is that? from Tom Fry. Tom Fry, yeah, gave me that. How many does he have? He said he had like, he originally had like 20. And then he started giving them out over the years. Because he just had like a bunch. He was so hyped. Like it was the first thing that like Australia was recognized for. There's a Cosmo ad in the back. Yeah, show that for the camera. <laughs> that thing is mint. No way! I'm like, I don't want to. Like, this is crazy. Yeah, and then I've, never, ha- I've honestly never like. Yo, check it, it out. Been blading yeah. like been like, yo, be careful. I know. So <laughs> we, if we ever get like a proper Damn. set, we got to incorporate this somehow. But yeah, wow. I was like, this is like the illest thing to come back with, you know. And Whoa. I was so hyped on this. I was like, yo, thank you so much. You like, I can't believe you just gave me this. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, I have like one or two here that I'm giving away to people. And there's a thanks for mine, Tom Fry. <laughs> <laughs> there's a he has like a little interview in here, and he signed it the tom fry Dang, part that's so, really really cool 
Yeah, this is sick. I was just super hyped on this. I don't know. I can't find it, but it's somewhere over here. I don't know. Do you be careful with that? <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> like all my other daily breads that are way newer than that were in <clears throat> way worse condition. Yeah. And that thing is mint, like never been touched. So that was a cool little keepsake I got. So then you did that. Um, on your way back, you yeah. stopped by in Hawaii. Oh, yeah. We had a layover in Hawaii. Got to visit Franco, Franco. our boy Franco. Camayo. Shout out Franco. Shout out Franco. When he's in New York, we'll have him on the show 100%. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's the homie right there. Yeah. But. Yeah, it was sick. We only had a few hours there, but... Or maybe, who knows, we're getting our Patreon buzz and we guys oh, and get got, us over to Hawaii. Oh, shit. Page, uh, Jump Street, Hawaii. Jump Street, Hawaii. <laughs> we'll be in, like, the Hawaiian shirts with, yeah. like, the lays and stuff. Totally. We'll have, like, people dancing. We'll try to get in touch with Michael Keeney. Who's that? Oh, man, he did... Um, Well, not he's a skater from Hawaii who filmed, like, the uh, USD, um, sh- the tour video. Oh, okay. He's from Hawaii? I didn't know that. Yeah, and he kept telling everyone he's going to punch him in the face and they touched <laughs> the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Break your face. Yeah, yeah break your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, real quick, um, Cameron jumped in with a couple of things after we talked about it before. Okay. It's why the website is why w y i i dot u s not dot com. Okay. So made that revision, and also the hours are extended this time. Okay. W y i i dot com dot, dot, dot no. us. <laughs> It's so w- hard not to d- say Okay, it. W-Y-I-I dot U-S. Yes. And the website is what? That's the website. That's the website. Yeah. It's not a dot com. It's a dot U-S. Okay, I guess. dot U-S. That's what he said. And the hours are extended this year. So it's last year, like people were a little upset that you had to leave at like noon on Sunday. Mm-hmm. But now the hours are extended until 4 p.m. Sunday. So you can skate like pretty much the whole day Sunday. And you could check in at 9 a.m. Friday, which is another benefit. Oh, there was no skating at noon on Sunday? <clears throat> Afternoon, like, they closed and kicked everyone out. Everyone's oh, like, what the fuck? Like, hmm. no one knew about it. But now Dang. it's now it's until 4. I left that night because so, I had to work the next yeah, day. Yeah, you did leave. Yeah, yeah, you were there for quick. But I would yeah. have been bummed if I would have took the I day was off bummed. and stayed. I literally put yeah. my skates on, put my helmet on like this, looked up, and then some kid was like, oh, you got to leave. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I literally put my helmet on and looked up. <laughs> it was unreal. Yeah, well, that's good. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah, so I just wanted to throw those two, two things out there also. It's good to know. Yeah. Real quick also. There's another event coming up. It's um, a skate for autism in Lehigh, Pennsylvania. I just want to shout this out. It's like a yeah. good event for a good cause. It's a skate for autism. They're having a 5K fun skate and a 10K race. So um, it's Saturday, May 11th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, it's to support the autistic community. Dang, we should try to get out there. <clears throat> I don't even know where Lehigh is. Well, Pennsylvania. Yeah, well, I know that. But Pennsylvania could be like <laughs> yeah, an know. hour and a half away or it could be 10 hours away. Well, yeah, it'd be good to check out. because If it's close, yeah, and I'm yeah. free, yeah, I'm down to go. Um, to support the autistic community and those families affected with autism. So all proceeds will be donated to the Autism Society of Lehigh Valley. And it's $20 to enter the race or the fun skate. So it should be a good turnout there. It's just like a super chill Yeah, event. I mean, it's just sick to see like, you know... It's a, all different kinds of bladers like uh, participating in charity. I'd like to see more. Yeah, exactly. More of that. That's why yeah. I like, definitely wanted to mention that. That's really it's cool. an event for a good cause. It's not just like people throwing a box. Totally. Which is nothing wrong with that either. <laughs> but I mean, there's room for everything. Yeah. But I think, yeah, more charity is good. Yeah. For sure. Um, what, uh, back on like the Winter Clash thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you noticed this. I noticed it because um, Joe Atkinson won and I saw Julian Cudeau there and Julian, I guess, doesn't ride for his spon- trigger skates anymore because he was riding Solomon's at the oh, event. Wow. Did you notice that or no? I didn't. I didn't. I, I saw him around, but I didn't see him skating. Actually, yeah, he was skating Solomon's again. Oh wow! <clears throat> and now that Joe doesn't ride for Rossi's, he's also skating Solomon's too. In in the feast, I saw like a photo of him, and he's clearly like riding Solomon's. Oh wow! And isn't that weird that like two like top pros that are like competing in like world like tv televised like yeah. worldwide events are riding like solomon's now i know there was a big controversy about that i'm not trying to get like crazy into it like start arguing and shit yeah but that's, i mean i'd like to get to the bottom of it though this is a news partially a it news is show i mean if you guys got something to say about it go on and say it yeah but i was never really against it but now seeing that like two like of the top pros like some of our top pros who are like joe just won feast also yeah. in saudi arabia Julian's always like winning events in Paris or whatever. He yeah. competes in Feast also. Mm-hmm. And they're both riding Solomon's, which is a company that hasn't been around in like 20 years. It's crazy, man. Yeah. Like that they're not supporting, they're not representing even what this industry stands for. Yeah, kinda, I, saw, you know? I, saw, I saw this that got a lot of mixed mixed reviews. I saw a lot of people supporting and some people giving criticism. But Joe, yeah. like, you know, started a GoFundMe to basically yeah. like support his like skating and his travels. Yeah. And, you know, uh, you know, as. 
here's the thing. Like, it's sad that he has to do that because he's an, like an ambassador of this of the sport. <laughs> Obviously, right. especially like watching him things he does. We want him there, yeah. you know, and we want him around. So, um, while people have their opinions and they may, yeah, I think it's it's good to support those who like represent our thing well. And yeah. it, it would be nice to see, you know, hopefully some things emerge where they can get taken care of. Yeah. You know? It just seems weird that like, say like a kid sees Joe skating feast and like, Oh, I want to start skating now too. And he goes and buys like a used pair of Solomon's or something huh. like that. Yeah. Instead of investing money in back into skating. Yeah. Like buy a pair of them's whatever. Yeah. USD razors, Rosies. Um, it's only a, it's only a few houses in, in the game, you know, it's not too many. I know. Mm-hmm. And we could use all the support we could get too. Yeah, Totally. And I was just, I, I, I don't know. I didn't really see anyone talking about it now because mm-hmm. I know it was a big thing like a year or two ago when people were talking about that. Yeah. I forgot who brought that up in the first place. But um, I just found it really crazy that the, out of all the people, those people are the ones rocking it. Yeah. Usually it's like old school people who like just used to have them back in the day and like, you know, collect them like Jay Cottrell. Yeah. Like it's like a avid solemn well, skater. It's some, it's some like, it's some like punk rock shit <laughs> it's like i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't even reduce it to that but i would say it's like some basically like middle finger up type shit it kind maybe, of is you know yeah because it's just like whatever i'm just gonna skate what i want to skate because i like to skate and yeah i don't want to you know but i'm not gonna stop skating yeah well there's nothing wrong with that it's good that he's still skating and no. everything i just felt no, that it course. was weird that if someone saw him skating and looked up to him and like saw him skating solomon's yeah that they were gonna buy solomon's too you know <clears throat> when they should buy a pair of skates that like, but you want to hear the thing? If Solomon there. starts seeing sales coming up, maybe they'll come back. Maybe make Aaron Feinberg team manager, <laughs> change the game. Give you know him what the I first mean? Repro skate. <laughs> I think they should. Jeez, I don't know. I you know I don't know. I'd you used to skate Solomon's, right? right? Paul Stewart asked if you guys skated Solomon's. Yeah, I skated Solomon's in like you did. I know you did. Two thousand ninety nine or yeah, same thing. Me too. Like that, but yeah, yeah. I like them. I'm they not were, crazy about it. They them. were good. Yeah, I wouldn't like. Yeah. I don't. I'm not like fiending to buy them again yeah. and ride them or anything like that. They were good for the time, and that was it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people who really like them like them. Yeah. You know, like uh, like I see Jake Cottrell, but, Traffic, You know, it was, was on Solomon's a lot. Yeah. I don't get. I just don't get the people who like. I see a lot of people buying Solomon's and they they switch the sole plates, liners, frames, and all that. I'm like, why would you ride a Solomon then if you're changing all the parts on it? I think it's for the comfort. comfort. It's yeah, just that liner, right? It was like the first like neoprene liner right where it's like they it, they call it like I, cu- custom mold yeah yeah it was I remember, a heat molded liner too yeah, yeah that's what it was. i remember i had a friend who like when they first came out like they first came out mm-hmm. he was like dude i got the new so i was like dude can i try him and he was like nah man it's, <laughs> it's, it's a cu- for me it's a custom mold <laughs> if you put your foot in it it's gonna mess the mold up yeah <laughs> and i was like Ugh. i remember going to blades in the mall and yeah. they had like the when the first st9s and 8s came out and they had the the micro like the oven for it it was yeah. for like what? i guess it was yeah, this, like, really? it was for like hockey skates or something like that, oh, but it wow. worked on the Solomons. It's like, this is what it's like meant for, I guess. And it was literally a little oven, like an easy bake kind of oven. Yeah. And you put your liner in there and you heat it up and you put your foot in it and it molds to it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the level of like how far they can go with like the comfort in like super expensive blades. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's, I don't think like we've, as our like subculture thing with agri- aggressive have gotten there yet. But like, yeah, uh, I've seen Sola had some like 2000 two thousand dollar blades like years ago and they were just like them you put them on it was like first of all they were incredibly light and they mm-hmm. were just like super fast they were speed skates oh i was about to say if they were like crazy yeah, specialized but they were like skates. crazy comfortable super light and like f- like incredibly fast mm-hmm. i was like whoa dude it's mm-hmm. like the power and some of the, but yeah that's for an industry that has like legit sponsors yeah. and a lot of money coming well, yeah, in i guess yeah. that's probably why probably millions yeah yeah, yeah. yeah to, inv- to invest in like a, a mold like that or or design like even if like, I wear my Adidas sneakers, and I, I wish, like, Adidas made a skate or a liner that was, like, so... Like, every time I put my sneakers on, I just, like, if I'm walking on clouds. Like, yeah. I wish, like, there was skates that were like that, too, which is kind of like how Solomon's fit, I guess. Mm-hmm. And it just comes with the technology and all the the research and making a skate like that. Solomon had the money back in the day. Yeah. Which a lot of people, I guess, don't. Well, yeah, because Solomon had the, you know, attachment to, like, the other things they were doing with, like, the winter sports and things yeah, like yeah. that. They were, they were doing it for company. years already. Yeah. like, you And know, I guess that's why the intuition liners are so good, that people love them so much, because they were making ski boots mm. for a while. So they have, like, experience with that, which is pretty much the same thing as Solomon. Yeah, I mean, th- those industries are just deep, and they've been around for years. So. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. So I, I think if you have, um, if you're interested in Solomon, just get a pair of skates and put intuition liners in them. At least you're supporting something that is yeah. still investing back in the sport right now. Yeah, I mean... You're, you're supporting Leon with his thing. Yeah. And whatever skate companies are doing their thing now. Yeah, I mean, 
should you know I don't know you should do whatever the hell you want to do but I but if but if the thing the thing is like if you like certain skaters or certain companies and what they're doing and their movements then you know buy those skates because mm-hmm. it's just going to keep those people around more exactly that's it so if, if, <laughs> if, if you like what they do like you know you know a lot of people you know whatever like <laughs> certain companies a lot of people didn't support and they fall up they fell apart you yeah know? and you don't see of those course, yeah. you don't see those skaters anymore yeah yeah I think SSM was one of those companies. Yeah. You know, there mm-hmm. there were a lot of like got you know, and a lot, a lot of people had a lot of things to talk about it being an, an old used mold and mm-hmm. they're like, you know, we need something. Hey, it's whatever, we but I mean something. it didn't survive and yeah. I feel like you lost all those guys. Yeah. So And like don't make the same mistake twice. Yeah, and that was Shima too. Like out of yeah. all people like in our industry, like Shima like yeah. He's been killing it, and people like we idolized for so many years. Same thing with Rosies back in the day. There was like you know the the, the Rosies when they came back with like Dunkel, Lily, mm-hmm. and all those guys. But I mean, I don't know. That might have been different. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't really know. T- I don't, I don't know what the hell. Happened there, so I'm gonna back the hell <laughs> off of that one. But <clears throat> yeah. on a similar topic to that, um, so like we were talking about, hey, Aaron Holland's in here. I actually had this talk with Aaron in uh, Australia um, about Joe. He had this like GoFundMe thing going, mm. right? I know there's a lot of contra- controversy between that, which I'm yeah. not going to really get into now. It's been talked about already. Right. But let me ask you something. What was like, what would you say like the main reason for pros, at least in your generation, like leaving the sport? Not leaving, but like not, like stepping down from being a pro. What do you think the main reason was? Well, I, 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 everyone's different, you know? I don't know. I mean, I know a lot of people... Because like my, my generation is, is tough because I, I feel like I kind of bleed into the end of one and the beginning of another, of another. Mm-hmm. like, you know, because I, I guess kind of, yeah, because I was like at the end of like, you know, I'd done Europe tours with like Richard, Dominic, Carlos mm-hmm. and like, you know, I'd done been, yeah, yeah. been around with Dustin Latimer skating and stuff like yeah. that. Like at, at their, at their exiting, I was kind of entering and mm-hmm. then, but I was like hanging around for also like, you know, m- you know, Montre, John, Blino, yeah. and all those guys. And yeah. that was my like end. And mm-hmm. they're like kind of, you know, beginning and middle, what about like the first guys? What do you think, like the main reason for not being a pro anymore was? Oh, the first guys. Well, that's. I think that's. I mean, I could. I could assume, and I, I even though I don't, I try not to. But mm-hmm. like, if I could make an educated guess, I mean, they went from a place where they were making actually so, uh, uh, enough to live. Mm-hmm. You just know? enough to live. Enough to live. Yeah. It, it it wasn't like like yo they're crushing it, but. Making enough to live, like yeah. you know, Feinberg was doing a, a bit better because he won a few yeah. contests, saved a few bucks. There's a and, few exceptions always. Yeah, and uh, people who had like hands in, in different things, maybe doing a, a little bit better than others. But mm-hmm. and I think what they started to see as how well Dominic sub- subscribed it, um, described it to me was that like uh, the checks were getting substantially smaller, it was harder to live mm-hmm. off of, and it mm-hmm. was becoming obvious that this was something that you couldn't do as like a, a there was not much longevity to have this as a career so yeah. people kind of had to find other ways to like get by now, now do those people did those people like fully quit skating i don't think a lot of them did but i think they just had mm-hmm. to like be realistic with the next step yeah you know which was like get a job yeah which, less time to like tour well, and stuff yeah. which means you're like you're not really a pro anymore yeah unquote. i mean look like when you know john R- john rt said here you know he was he was 16 getting like two grand a month from from rollerblade and like mm-hmm. i think I, I hope this isn't wrong, but like Randy was like, you know, 16, I think at like five grand a month. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and then there were people, so there you're getting this done. You're like, well, oh, let's, we're going to kill it. You know? And then you see like kind of the point where you, I don't know, twenties, mid twenties getting down there. You're like, you have it, you've been kind of immersed in this and mm-hmm. you, you're realizing that's a starting to, to drop down a little bit. It's not yeah. going to be sustainable. Your body's starting to hurt. I just think it's a natural, uh, <laughs> progression and like you know there and but they're, look there's been people that's you know look jaron grobe is still pro man he's yeah. still he's still if people I, people find their ways i mean there there are people who've been involved from so so i think like i said it's very it's individualistic like you know it's it's, it's hard to like kind of make a group mm-hmm. assessment of that well i hate group assessments uh-huh. it, anyway i hate, yeah. I hate general <laughs> i hate general generalizations because it just like takes away from the individual i think the individual Issue was important, but yeah, I mean, look, a bunch of young kids got a lot of money, yeah, really quick, and maybe had been skating for four or five years, mm-hmm. and then older guys hurt bodies, 
And, you know, it's, it's hard to manage that at that age, you know? Of course, yeah. That's why a lot of people can easily go overboard because there's also, like, partying tied in, mm-hmm. you know, and, and these things that could really mess with your, I don't know, everything. Your priorities. Yeah, kinda. everything. <laughs> your priorities, your mindset, yeah, like, yeah. you know, like your mental health. But like, for the know. most part, like, pros couldn't sustain themselves through skating. So you need to, like, life moves on, kind of. You get, you get a job. Yeah. You got working 40 hours, but you can't skate as much. You can't travel and all this and that. Yeah. Um, so at Joe's GoFundMe, there was a lot of controversy on that. But I think there's another way around that, which is Patreon. I think that... Well, like, isn't that like the same thing? No, but it's not though. Like the GoFundMe is like, like give me money and then I get it once and like, like oh shit, like my 5,000 pounds or whatever he's getting mm-hmm. is done and now like what's the next step? Yeah. But like the Patreon's monthly. So say like a skater gets... I don't know what pros get nowadays. Say you're getting like $1,000 a month from mm-hmm. a, X company, you know? Right. Um, if you have a Patreon, some, some of these guys have like 50,000, 30,000 followers. If yeah. like a small percentage of them even donate like a dollar each, $2 each, you have like another income coming in and you are able to skate and sustain yourself. In addition to the $1,000 a month, maybe you get another like $2,000 from Patreon and there's your check right there. Like Miguel always, you know, what Miguel always says like, yeah. it's up to us and only us, you know, That's true. like, like That's true. it's true. <laughs> yeah. And like, I would happily yeah. give five dollars a month like a dollar each to like the, my top five favorite skaters you know also and I if think- it was incentivized too like for example like like the homies like hey you know if i if i get here i'll you know i'll take this tour i'll take this trip, yeah well, or i'll put out an edit like or yeah or you do put out an edit and you use that as a support or just like exactly kind of these ways to like incent i think it's a great way for people to start brainstorming yeah i like- think that's like a conversation that we should have just yeah. as a community like if Say Joe has a Patreon now and he's like, say I donate a dollar, you donate a dollar, two dollars, whatever it is. And like a thousand other people, two thousand other people are also doing the same thing. Right. He could have like, it's another big check that he gets every month. Mm-hmm. He could put out, you know, edits. If I want to see him skate, you know, yeah, I love watching Joe mm-hmm. skate. So that's incentive for him to keep going. He's going to last more than, you know, five years or whatever it is. Yeah. He's going to last 10, 15 years. There's pros in other sports that are like in their 50s still doing it but, and shit. But you know what? But I, like, I think... In like uh, application, it's harder to make work without the incentive because it's hard for I think people to want to go out and spend any money without like having received anything. Well, you know that's what I mean? part of the game. Well, if that, you well, want if you want that check, work for it. Put out an edit every month. Well, I, that's the thing. That's yeah. what, that's what I'm saying. There should be some brainstorming surrounding oh, like, yeah, the, the incentive of how to like of yeah. how to involve people. But I but I think that's a good path yeah. for sure. Pretty yeah. much, if you want to see these pros keep going, like if if something like in your generation, whenever it was, if people wanted yeah. to see you go and you had a Patreon, like, yo, I want to watch fish keep skating. Mm-hmm. I want to see him keep making all these sections and shit. Mm-hmm. I'm going to donate money to this Patreon. And it doesn't have to be a, a lot. Like I said, like yeah. if I, I would happily donate $5 a month, which is like nothing, mm-hmm. like a dollar or $2 to my favorite pros. Right. And these people could continue to skate and continue to put out content. Yeah. Like Oigan puts out edits all the time. I feel like every week that like the pork and zoo kids have a new edit out. And like, I would love to yeah, support that always- in other ways. Like, the more incentive they get, the more motivated they would be to skate, make edits, travel, do contests, and all this and that. I think this is a great way to keep our pros in the industry for longer. The I, ones at least that we want to see. It's definitely a conversation that we got to start having because yeah. like, I, like, I, I totally want to see people hang around. Like, you know? Yeah. I, it's, that's and that's, that's, what, that's, what, that's also like going back to Winter Clash. That was also mm-hmm. something that I saw that was really good from that. Like to mm-hmm. have like these kind of things to like bring everyone like to get, keep everyone involved yeah, exactly. and have like a reason mm-hmm. so yeah it's up to us and only us it's up to us and only us that's exactly it. see imagine yeah. if, like everyone at winter clash each donated like a dollar to like their favorite skaters or whatever plus like everyone else around the world yeah it's like an extra you know doubles your income or whatever whatever it totally. is and i think that's something that yeah like you said we should have a discussion about mm-hmm. it should be more open i want to hear like what other people's opinions should be on this because yeah I want to guys, see what these do people you think? skating. Exactly. Guys, what do you guys think? Guys, in I want to. I want to see these guys as lo- around as long as possible. Yeah, totally. And I would happily give up money for that. And if all these pros had, you know, Bobby Spazov had a, a Patreon page, Oigan had a go a uh, Patreon page, and Joe and you know whoever else, just to see even like Alex Brasco had to have a Patreon page. Like, did he? I'm saying like if like yeah. all these people do get Patreon totally. pages, like I would happily support all these people. Yeah. I mean, it, it would be, you know, like, like, like I said, like f- for someone like me, 
like I would be like, yeah, I want to support these people, but then like I wouldn't. But if I saw like something to like put in, I, I would. Like, and yeah. the thing about Patreon also is like it's direct feedback from your fans. Because like if how about this if a request based system where you're like, dude, can you pull or try this trick? And there's like. You just toss in like two hundred bucks mm-hmm. or something. There, like, there's there's different things like that too. Spots. Patreon works in different ways too. So yeah. you could do stuff like hmm. that. But like it's like I said, it's, it's direct feedback because how far you can go down. The yeah, if, you, if you're doing good, your Patreon's going to be high. But mm-hmm. if you start falling off and you don't, you stop making edits. Like people are going to be like, oh, I want to put my money towards someone else. And then you're yeah. like, oh shit, I got to like start working again and start skating more. And I think it's more motivating in that way mm-hmm. to keep, you know, pros making totally. content. This conversation is actually bringing me back to. The winter clash where they had like all these like you know basic basically like classes and like uh what was it what what would you say those are like where they're like t- kind of these open forum discussions where like they're just kind of talking about making money from skating like without yeah. having to be like an early skater yeah but yeah I just wanted to even though I feel like I'm kind of switching the subject there shout out to jo- to Yo Yo for like organizing all that, all that all that like I can't believe all that was so much so much work goes into that. And you, when you're there, you really see it. All the people, yeah. all the volunteers too, that just donate their time and effort to yeah. building the ramps, helping out, organizing, you know, whatever it is, helping out the day volunteers, the food and working the doors and all that. Yeah, it's 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 an insane effort from everyone. There's a lot part. going on there. It is. And what should you you have a Patreon? <laughs> yeah, the, maybe. There's this thing. Speaking of Patreon, what was the Patreon Pro thing? That was that. Oh, it was that. Okay. Yeah, I just okay. think that pros should have Patreons, okay. so that like that, that, that was a mark yeah. on our thing. It said Patreon Pro. I was like, what is that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty much if if every pro made their own Patreon, and yeah. You gotta you gotta if you know the companies aren't gonna pay you enough, you gotta make it work yourself. That's just the world we live in nowadays. Yeah. Everyone's making their own money for themselves, doing their own thing, being an entrepreneur, doing you know you can't rely on companies anymore. Nope. And even though sponsors are there, you could get your salary from your sponsor in addition mm-hmm. Patreon. Plus, you're motivated I, to travel, do contests, get paid for all that stuff as well. I agree. And I think that's, if you don't want to donate, just don't donate then. If you're against it, just don't donate. Just don't. But I'm sure there's a lot of people who will support it. Yeah. And look, exactly. If, if, if you're against something, just, you know, I know we're, we're, in this, we're in this world right now where everyone has like a voice and we all feel like we got to express our distaste for something. If you don't like yeah. it, just like keep it. I don't know. Just I th- ignore I, it then. I think it's best to keep the negativity at home. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe yeah. just like. Take it to like a, a punching bag or mm-hmm. or your local skate park. You know what I mean. But yeah. like, if you don't like it, like you said, just just leave it where it is. Yeah. But I I think it's an open discussion, and um, yeah, I'd like to hear what everyone thinks about that. Yeah. And just in general, if someone starts popping up with a Patreon page, I'm down to support it. Yeah, I mean, it depends who it is. But yeah, it depends who it is. I'm yeah. say, I'm just saying, but, like, but for sure, in general, I, I, like pros, I, I like the idea. Yeah, I like the idea. People need to get paid more. Totally. If it's not going to happen from sponsors or other companies. We got to make it happen ourselves. Totally. And at such a small expense, it could go a really long way. Yeah, this is our community. This is our world. Yes. It's <laughs> up to us and only us. We need we need a uh, like a soundbite of of Miguel. Oh, dude, I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to shout out Blade Talk real quick. Did did you? Uh, that's that dude. He talks back the news every week. Is that? Yeah. No, he's, he's he does like voiceovers. It's like a. Oh yeah. Like okay. The, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he did one with like Colin and I from. <laughs> freestyle rolling from reading. freestyle rolling it was so funny it's beautiful like a waterfall <laughs> i gotta watch more of those videos you have I to just watch saw the it. one that, that you showed me yeah uh, mike made me aware of it and it was pretty funny so shout out play talk if you <laughs> wait mike who johnson uh he's the one who said <laughs> yeah he sent it to me of course oh no would... and the colin sent it to me too uh, of course yeah. mike would be the one to be like yo check this shit out yo, yo <laughs> they make so it funny you funny. son <laughs> so funny <laughs> they make it funny you son but yo let's also real quick Kazu, right? Oh yeah, of course. Kazu's on, on a mission right now. What's, if anyone doesn't know, he's always on a mission. Yeah, but this is like an insane mission. It's this insane is like one. he's definitely topping it, stepping it up. For anyone who doesn't know, Kazu, he's a skater from Japan. He's in his fifties, I believe, mid fifties, something mm-hmm. like that. He's traveled around the U.S. a couple of times with his wife and his kid. He just has like such a passion for skating, and now he's on a mission to skate from the north of Japan to the south of Japan, straight up skating. It's 1,400 miles, and he says it's going to be about a three-month trip, I think. So I think he started like last week or something. He is on a mission right now for the next three months of strictly skating through his country. So anybody, everyone show him some love. 
Show him some support on his Instagram. What's his Instagram? His Instagram is, uh, it's like the year he was born or something. Let me go figure it out because real quick. I don't think I follow him, so I'm going to follow him right now. Yeah, he, his, his Facebook, just like everyone, just show him all that love and support because he needs that right now. He's on a, it's 1968 rollerblading is his Instagram page. 1968 rollerblading? Yeah. Sick. So I don't think he has updates on his Instagram, but his Facebook, he has been updating uh, with like pictures of where he's at and his skates and stuff like that. So Sick. that's like something I've never seen happen before. And we should all like just fucking show him some love and support and Hell yeah. let him know that he's got this. Cause I know that's not going to be an easy mission. Dang dude. Three months of straight skating. 1400 miles. Yeah. That's tough. That's a lot. It's like halfway through, the, through our country, United yeah. States. But I, I mean, I'm, yeah, I mean, I've, he's probably hitting all types of weather too. Cause Japan goes Japan. north and south. So yeah. there's like mountains and shit where it snows. And there's also like tropical islands. I don't know how far exactly he's going. But I'm sure I know they get some tough weather. rain during some season, but I don't know yeah, what season yeah. that. I, I don't really know either about that. But I remember seeing like a picture of him like on a plane, I guess, to like where his starting destination was, and he's like saying bye to his wife and kid, and he's like, "That's it, I'm starting right now." That's real. Yeah. So so. I sick. like I like the idea of doing that with life. I wish, like, for example, like if I never had to work again because I was financially secure <laughs> for the rest of my life, all I would do is shit like that. Yeah. Oh, of course. I, yeah. I, the, the first thing, the first thing I would do is ride from here to California or something yeah. on a bike. Yeah. And then I would try to try to, I want to do that again in Europe, like all around yeah. for like a few months. But oh, yeah, I was riding my bike everywhere too. That's yeah. I would just, I would just yeah. do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So sick that I don't know what he, cause last time when he came to America, I know he quit his, he saved up money. To quit his so, so he could not work for a month so he could drive around the United States skating, which is always like a dream of his, I guess. Yeah. So he probably did something similar with this. He was probably just like, I have this goal. I want to work some bullshit job for like another year, save up money and just mm-hmm. do this, which is probably what he's doing. And um, yeah, <laughs> a camera said, get Kazu a Patreon. For real, get Kazu a Patreon. Yo, there you go. <clears throat> and Angela Bender, Kazu is an absolute inspiration. I love his style so much. And he is to yeah. see him skating. He did the clip. Uh, the 30 day blade challenge but he was on like day like 1600 something let me see what he was at because that was I think he holds the record for that too probably uh, maybe he doesn't do at it anymore at least like the most documented record yeah maybe he doesn't do it anymore he was definitely in the thousands and he skates every single day at 50 in his 50s dang which is so sick that we can't even skate in our 30s every day <laughs> Cause you never know. Chris Farmer might have skated like two thousand days in a row from like when he maybe. first started skating. Alex to, maybe too, because I know Alex skated every day for a while. Back in the he day, just yeah. didn't, didn't. It wasn't a thing. It, it wasn't, wasn't docu- trendy. Well, it wasn't we trendy have, back then. We couldn't document it. Yeah, it wasn't trendy back then. Well, but I mean, a th- a th- we didn't have the social media. A thousand is pretty long. It's like three years, like almost three years. I mean, B Free's. Cr- yeah, he's up there too. Scraping up on his he's heels. He's probably man. second place. He's about to hit seven hundred. Yeah, I think he's going for the record. Probably, but Kazu was, I'm pretty confident Kazu was in over a thousand, like a 1300 or something like that. That's so impressive. That is, it's crazy. That's so impressive. Yeah. Like, dude. He was skating like the rain, like no matter what it was, he was skating. If I skate like three days in a row, like I need like a a one hour bath and some like. I skated two days at Woodward and my back is still hurt. salt and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, he only has to skate crazy shit. I know even Be Free, he just skates like. I don't know, He just go out and get a clip. I asked him about it once and he was like, I'll just do whatever I can. If I have like a break with anything, I'll just jump over this garbage can 360 over it and like that's skating for yeah day, but know? sometimes he'll just grab a clip but lately he's just he goes been, like the park he's just been murdering skating. shit yeah, like yes. yeah it's crazy yes. like his like his one clips like of his like 678th clip was like i'll be doing some drop curve row. i don't know yeah he's, like crushing it yeah mm-hmm. shout out i can't wait to be free on the show yeah that'd be great when he comes, if he comes back out to New York, yeah, or, or maybe if we we'll go get out our to Patreon. Yeah, we'll get, out to, <laughs> we the, get Patreon. We'll get out to the Bay. Over there. <laughs> I mean, we would we wouldn't have to get our Patreon too high, would we? Because California tickets are relatively cheap. Yeah, but there's two of us though. Too too much trouble. And <laughs> yes, Cameron, I, I I landed one flat spin, the first one I did. But we have to go back. Oh, when what year is it? I was gonna. Ask, I, see, I see you like get, get ahead and announced <laughs> on your Facebook because that's the only way I'm it was gonna happen. That's how you commit to uh, it. Yeah. That's so how you I put. Commit. I was like, I was Announce literally, it for I was the literally world right there at that computer by myself. I was just like, I'm on a flat spin. I always wanted to, and I, every time I go to Woodward too, like, I don't take advantage of Woodward for what it is. Kind of like right. I'll just skate like the P rail. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll skate the P rails, the ledges, like the mini Mega. ramp, Mega. but like. Mega. Like what the fuck? There's foam pits there and resi pads. Like you, like I always want to do these right. things. Like why not do it? So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna flat spin this weekend. And then everyone started jumping in the comments. Like, oh, let's see, you prove it or whatever. So and a couple of people I mean, joined. The Cameron Carr joined in. Um, 
Tim Adams, Grant Hazleton, and we all started flat spinning in the foam pit. And then we did the resi. Um, a couple of us landed it, a couple of us didn't. I landed one in the resi. Cameron landed one in the three resi. Three or five? I five. I wanted to do three, but it's so hard to do a three. Like, you just whip, naturally whip around to a five, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to do it on the mega ramp, but the weather was so shitty. It was super windy and cold. So I couldn't now, really were you muting it? Yeah. I was just simple, just yeah. regular, like, if you looked up flat spin 540 in a dictionary, like that's what I was doing, just mad basic. But that was like the way to commit to it. I had to post it and like make sure like people knew so that people could call me out if I wasn't doing it. And literally the first day I got there, people were like, oh, you're going to flat spin? You're going to flat spin? I'm like, I guess so. I have to now. Now I have to. Yeah. I'm on the hot seat. Yeah. But yeah, I did one on the resi and I want to do one on like a real launch box. There is a launch box there, but. So I don't know. Would you say you did it or not? I don't, I don't say so, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I landed it, but I, I, don't, mean, I don't count it. Like, I, I'm not going to tell people I could flat spin. You're definitely taking the steps. Yeah. So N -n Now you're at the point where if someone put a gun to your head and was like, flat spin that box, you, you have the tools. Yeah. Like if some, you've done on the resi. If someone did that to me, I'd be dead. <laughs> because I, I, I've never, I mean, I've got to learn these things. Next time I've, done done flat, I've done flat spins, actually. Like, oh, yeah. In, really? On spines. Like, spines. That's the scariest shit. It was just like the way I used to do threes on spines. It was more, and then someone's like, just dude, drop your shoulder. And I yeah. was just like, Jeez. Flat three spines. Yeah, just three spines. But this was like is crazy. a long time ago. Yeah. You know? you got, you, those things you got to do consistently. You can't just like, yeah. oh, I haven't done a, a double backflip in a long time. Let me just throw one. Yeah. And you get it, you know? Yeah. There's Unless no, you're like, you know, J Jason Stinson. Yeah. Maybe. I guess some, someone like that. But it's a different different breed. Yeah. yeah. I guess I'm calling it out now that I have to flat, flat five the uh, mega ramp in what year is it? 2019. When the weather's good and I can skate the mega ramp. Unless oh, I go beforehand. Real? Yeah. Do you want to flat that? I wanted to do it. Last weekend, but the weather hey. sucked. It was super windy. If I flat five, they would have blown me off. My man's still out here <laughs> getting it, dude. Watch out, Winter Crash 2020. <laughs> My guy's going to come out and That's part of the inspiration, probably. Everyone over there is flipping and spitting and shit. I'm like, I always wanted to do that. But yeah. we live in New York. There's no fucking launch boxes, foam pits, nothing like that. Dude, my boy Lee, he he went out. He's he's my age, like a year older, 35, 36. And um, he was doing like the transfer flat spin fives. And I was like, dude, Lee, you crushed these. He's like, mate, I just learned it last year. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, you're my age, man. I got to yeah. So See, it, I feel like the flat spin is like a, a mellower of a flip to learn. Shout right? out Lee. Big Shout time. out Lee. Lee Devereaux. He he's the man. <laughs> the man? Oh, I don't he's think the so. Man. He's the man. Um, but yeah, like this flat spins are like, it's just like if you get 360 or 540 a box, you mm -hmm. just, like you said, just drop your shoulder kind of thing. Yeah. It's all the commitment. It's, you yeah. have like the power to do it. It's just the commitment. Yeah. So I figured that was an easy way to get into the, the flip game. That's a good way to get into it. <laughs> um, I want to actually skate the foam pit at West because it looks a lot better. Like the the foam pit with like the old school foam pit that they have at East where you mm -hmm. got to like crawl yeah, and get you yourself out back. Rope so up. tiring. Yeah. What's the one at West? It's like a gym mat. So, oh. So there's no, there's no pulling though? yourself out. Well, I don't know. It's probably it, not it, as It looks pretty padding. good. It looks, really? Yeah. It looks good, but you don't oh. sink into it. It's just like padding. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like it probably like hurts more if you thing. fall on it. No. Maybe. I don't know. Like you're not as. I would imagine if they put it in there, it's gotta be pretty functional. <laughs> I guess so. You I know? figured you wouldn't be as it's inclined to just land on your head. I've seen a few people landing on their heads and faces at the, in the foam pit. And I don't think you would want to do that on like a big gym mat. No, you probably wouldn't. <laughs> hmm. Even in a foam pit, it's tough. Let alone like uh, a gym mat. Yeah. Especially those dirty ass foam. <laughs> get on your face. And it's like I was like breathing it in like yeah, like, like a like half hour afterwards. I'm like choking lungs. on. I'm like I'm pretty sure there's yeah. foam in my lungs. And, oh. you, and you have and you have like virgin lungs that are sensitive, so it's like you know. <laughs> Why? Like, you don't smoke? Yeah, me. I'll, I'll, I'll take some shit. My lungs will be like, eh, I'm used to this crap. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So Cameron said it's an airbag. By the way, the the West an airbag is that what it is? An airbag. See if it's remember? an airbag, it's got to be awesome because think about Hollywood movies. People jumping off. I still like, don't want to fall on my face. But think about <laughs> Hollywood movies where people like think about how yeah. good airbag. Yeah, is. they jump out like buildings and shit yeah. into airbags. There used to be one at at uh, East. The, there used to be a mega ramp into an airbag. I never, I never did that, the airbag thing. Might be amazing. You never know. Might be. I never it might be it. like, I mean, I would imagine it's an upgrade. I would I would not imagine it's a downgrade. The climb out, yes, is definitely an upgrade. Climb out is. Yeah, I don't know about the impact. Well, I mean, only one way to find out. <laughs> Got to get over there sometime. <laughs> Woodward West, Jump Street. Got to get people on. If there's an there. event there, I'm down to go out. I've never been out to Woodward West. It's crazy. I missed all the events out there. And I still want to skate the mega ramp, the full size mega, before they close it down. <laughs> I'm calling out here so that people could talk shit on me if I don't do it. So I have to do it. No, you got to, but it's just. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to flat five it. I just want to jump it. 
I mean, dude, like Shima tried to three that. I mean, Shima, Shima might have threed that. Well, he's a crazy boy. Dude, that thing is, and what? Yeah, I don't even what Dave and Half he did on that thing. It's, yeah, Dave's edit, his uh, yeah, WRS edit, whatever, was strictly on the mega ramp. I didn't know you. It was possible to make an edit on the mega ramp, bro. That but guy he is, did it. That guy is the most like superhuman metal guy, but he's <laughs> like super normal too. It's crazy. Uh, shout out Dave Lang. Yeah, he's usually sometimes he watches. I don't think he's watching today. Does he watch? Yeah, he was on uh, the Winter Clash. One of the Winter Clash episodes, he was watching. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we got we gotta have we gotta have him on soon too. And we have a long list of guests to get on here. There's so many, so many I know. guests. I know. And we're gonna have we're gonna have to have some guests that we had on on again. Yeah, because there's always there's never enough time. There's never enough. But I don't know. Do we have anything else? Um, I don't know if anyone has any other thing else we wanted to, to talk about. Uh, someone said do something on the Mega Ram quarter. That's the see. That's like. The next step besides just that's not that bad. I've hit that. That's not bad. Like airing it though. No, I like back. Oh yeah, like yeah. I, I could grind the coping and shit too. I'm like at because least to be honest, least. the mega ramp quarter is not like a. Re- it's thirty foot, but it's not like a regular quarter. It's just it's like a wave. All the, it it takes you right. It's up long. There. Well, because you just like just wait. You because <laughs> you're just gonna <laughs> yeah, cause like like you don't like, treat it like a regular quarter. You just like yeah wait and you just get up there. Yeah. And you're like, oh, here I am. I only recently started skating the east quarter pipe and it's a little tricky. But if you can skate a vert ramp, it's like the same thing. I think that's like, more of a quarter pipe though than this one is. Probably the, the is. 30s like yeah yeah. I think the east so, one is like, like a wave. It's like 22 it's like a or it's 25 or something like that. But like it was we skated the vert in lot eight and literally the next day I went to skate the mega ramp and I was like oh it's the same thing. Okay. Even though it's like double the height, it's still mm-hmm. like it feels the same. You know? Yeah, I want to go back and have a vert session, man. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. I got a little one with Jordan this this past week. Jordan who? Bias. He was out on there at the vert? Yeah. I'm, he, he, he's everywhere. He's like JP. Damn. Quickly, everyone follow Lehigh Valley Bladers for info on the skate for autism also. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we good on that? I think so. It's All been right. a lovely chat. It has been. It, it feels good to get back up here and, and see everybody and talk yeah. with everybody. It's good and to see everyone. It's good to see everyone. Yeah, it's always good to see everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you don't already, follow us, please, on Facebook, iTunes, YouTube. Subscribe to us so you get notifications. Hit the bell. Mm-hmm. Um, Instagram. And if you like what you see here, you want to see more of this, please support our Patreon page. We have our monthly giveaway. Also, I wanted to say yep. on our Patreon, I did have a thing saying like that we were doing like a monthly giveaway, but I got an email from Patreon saying we can't do that. Okay. So nothing on the Patreon says that we have giveaways, but you all know we have giveaways. <laughs> yeah. Just for legal reasons, we can't announce it on Patreon itself. But maybe for legal reasons, we can't announce it on here either. So we don't have giveaways. Wink. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, yeah, uh, congrats to to Hogan. Alex yeah, Hogan, who yeah. was the winner Shout this, out Hoagie. Of, of March for our Patreon giveaway. I bet Hoagie can't wait to get his stuff from Jump Street. <laughs> <laughs> Hope the socks do good this weekend. Oh, my God. The socks are going <laughs> to kill it this year, dude. I'm telling you. Um, yeah, and let's keep in mind this Patreon for the pros and keep that conversation yeah, going. Yeah. Let's get these people getting paid. Let's get the uh, these ideas flowing. Yeah, let's get it out there. But other than that, we'll see you on the next show. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We hope you have a wonderful night. Lovely week. <laughs> See ya. Peace.